Hey guys, hope you're doing well. Today's video is going to be super exciting. As you can tell, my makeup is really pastel-y, maybe a little colorful. So we're gonna be doing a review on a new Natasha palette. But first, I wanted to show you quick a little bit of Harv here, because I know you guys love to see him. So here he is. <laughs> Today we're gonna to be talking about the new Natasha Denona Pastel Palette. This is actually available right now in Sephora, Sweden. It's also available across Europe and it's available in some Selfridges stores in the UK, which is how I got this. So we'll talk about that in a second. Today's video is a full review. This is not going to be a first impressions because I luckily have had this palette for a few weeks and I've been able to test every single shade thoroughly. So I can give you guys a full, very detailed review on whether or not this palette will be be ideal for you or not. So let's get started. Let's talk about the outer packaging first, which is just the cardboard casing that it comes in. So we have the theme carried from the palette itself onto the exterior box. This is a midi size palette, which I do think is a big pro, and we'll talk about that as well. But on the back of the packaging, you're going to see all of the shades in this palette. And there's quite a bit of different formulations in here as well, which I appreciate. So we do have, of course, her mattes. We have dual chromes in here. We have metallics in here. We do have cream to powder in here as well, which is definitely my favorite Natasha Denona formulation. And she does have a cheat sheet on the back of the cardboard box, which is really nice if you are new to Natasha's formulations. And what she says for mattes is ideally using a fluffy brush for building up the pigment, blending out into the crease and things like that. You can also use a more precision brush for her mattes very easily. And for the dual chromes and the metallics in particular, Using a fingertip is probably best to get that more ample color payoff, but you can also use a denser eyeshadow brush or spray your brush as well. So those textures are just a little bit denser than her matte formulation and require a little bit more. Now let's open up the palette itself because Okay, it is very, very beautiful and ideal for spring in my opinion. This is the palette and you can see that of course we have the same theme design from the cardboard box. When you open it up, you're going to see all of the beautiful shades, which it really is a very beautiful pastel, bright, fun palette in my opinion. There are two repeat shades in here. Both of them are from the Tropic palette. We have Mint Frost on the top and we also have Lemoncello on the bottom. And the Tropic palette now is discontinued, I believe. So if you miss those shades, they are in here, but if you already have Tropic, they are repeats for you. This midi palette is the exact same price as her other midis in the line. And I actually really like that she made this one a midi. She actually did do a colorful palette not that long ago in a larger size. And that was Circo Loco, which is this one. So this is actually a larger palette and it is still very, very bright and colorful, but the brightness of the pastel is definitely a little bit more. So we'll talk about that too. I am gonna be comparing them at the end, but this one is, much more of an investment. Because it's a bigger palette, it is pricier than the pastel, but also the size of the pans. These are larger sizes, and if you are not wearing color all the time, it might not necessarily be justifiable to pick up a palette this big with colors that you might not use all the time. This is a lot more reasonable to me because they're smaller pans. The price point is a little bit better as well. And that way you don't have to commit to such large pan sizes compared to Circle Loco. This is one that at least if you wanna play with color from time to time, if you're like myself, I don't always have bright makeup like this. And so for that purpose, this is a little bit more reasonable when it comes to deciding which palette you wanna get between the two of them and playing with color from time to time. Today's look is very, very simple and it kind of brings pastel in my opinion to not super loud, not super like really crazy bold. I mean, this palette is going to be a little bit brighter and very different compared to her Glam palette, for instance, which is a little bit more of that everyday friendly type shades, right? This is one that's just perfect for having a little bit of fun with your artistry and trying something different. So for today, I went all over the lid with the shade Feather. Feather is one of her creamy mattes and it's very beautiful. I will say just like the rest of the mattes in this palette, this is one that requires a couple of layers to get full opacity on the lid. So I would like to say it's like a light to medium opacity with the first layer, but in order to really get that richness and that brightness behind your look, you do need to layer these. 
for sure. The good thing is that the mattes do not have any fallout, which is very consistent with her other palettes, which I really like. And this feather shade was super easy to apply and build. So Heather is right here on this palette and then we move over to Duet for step two. Duet is a duochrome shade and it's really stunning. I definitely had to apply this with a fingertip though. Keep in mind, you are going to have to build this one too. I think just as a rule of thumb with these types of shades, either you're doing a concealer as your primer or you're really packing these on to get the most out of them. So applying two layers got me to see that duochrome shift that I was looking for, but it is a little bit on the subtle side for this shade. I wanted to add a little bit more depth and this kind of backfired on me a little bit. <laughs> we'll talk about that. This is Tool. it's at the top here. It's a very beautiful pink. Has to be one of my favorite shades in this entire palette. It is so beautiful and so smooth. This is also a cream to powder. Given how Tool and Feather look kind of like in pan, I thought for sure there'd be a little bit more distinction between the shades, but I guess adding that little bit of the Duet shade over top it really darkened it more than I thought it did because once I added Tool as a shadow shade, I noticed that it gave me a little bit of some distinction there, but I really had to build it up just like the rest of them to get that pigment impact I was looking for. I still kind of wished it had a little bit of a deeper presence compared, so like the contrast would be a little bit better there. And you'll see with the final look that it really does look like this side and this side are the same. <laughs> so that kind of backfired. I really wish that color was a little bit richer against that feather shade, but it seemed to blend into each other a little bit. No fallout or any issues with applying it and building it. But like I said, we have this common theme with this palette, which is to build. Definitely two to three layers of each for sure to get your maximum payoff. Next, I wanted to add a little bit of some green. So I added the green in the middle, which is kind of like a blue green. And this is the shade Adriatic, I think is how you say it. It's right here, super beautiful. This is another one that had to be built. <laughs> so when you see how I'm applying it, this is the first layer and you can see that it is still significant. You can see that it's on the look really beautifully. So here we have Adriatic and we have Duet. You can see that Natasha's calling these duochrome, but they're very slight. They're not like her typical where they really have a significant flash between the two shades. This is like slight, you know, like very slight to me. I think the strongest duochrome in this palette is probably Illusion. I'll show you the Illusion. It's actually way, way more of like a, whoa, okay, this is a duochrome, right? So do you see how that one is just like way, it kind of goes from like silver to this really nice purpley pink. This one is definitely the strongest. The other two are a little bit more subtle in my opinion, but they are still considered duochrome. The next shade I wanted to put on my lid was Dainty. So I'll show you Dainty right here. This is super, super beautiful. She calls this a DCS on the palette like formula map. I don't think I've seen a DCS before. I think this is supposed to be a duochrome, like multi-chrome sparkle type shade because it's really, really beautiful. And this also stands out in the palette in my opinion. There is a little bit of fallout here, but I really like how this one reminds me of like starlight with a little bit of pink. It's super, super pretty. And I've actually just put tulle all over the lid which is right here. You can see this one and then I put dainty over top and it looks really, really beautiful. So even just that alone, if you don't want it to be super bold or pastel like with multiple colors, you can just pick a couple of them and especially the pinks, they really do a good job of working together. There is a little bit of fallout, like I said, but it's not terrible. So placing it with your fingertip is going to be the best way to minimize that as much as possible. And I did put that a little bit on the edge here and a bit in the middle. But you can see that next to this kind of minty green, it's sort of getting swallowed a little bit. I did also try to use Mint Frost, which is from Tropic. I wanted to see if the quality was maintained because Tropic to me was really hit or miss. Mint Frost and Lemoncello were very strong shades in that palette, but a lot of the other ones were kind of dry. So Mint Frost also does a great job. I placed it over the top of that Adriatic shade so, so beautiful. A little bit of fallout as well, given that it is a metallic, but nothing crazy. So where my head is at when it comes to the ideal person for this, when it comes to ease of use, for those of us that don't always wear color, I think this is a little bit on the challenging side. Here's why. When it comes to the color story, this is very 
stunning, I think. But it's also kind of like jumpy. Like the pinks, I can see some collaboration there pretty easily. But if you're not used to having shades that have pretty abrupt transition, like a pink to a mint or something like that, it might challenge you a little bit. And if you think of this in a positive way or something fun where you can actually express your creativity, that's great. But if that kind of stresses you out, then that might not be the best palette for you because it's not as easily structured as some of her other ones are. So so for myself, I like to open this palette up, take my time with it. This is certainly not a palette that I would open up, you know, right when I had to go somewhere and I only had 10 minutes to get ready. I just feel like I would kind of get anxiety and have some stress about if I put shades together that look nice and I would worry about that. So I like to kind of sit down and just play with makeup with this one. I do think it's nice to have in my collection because I love having some pastels as a nice addition and I love that they're midi size so it's not a huge commitment compared to some of her larger ones. This palette unfortunately does have carmine in some of the shades so it's not a vegan palette and I just looked at the back of this to confirm that and yes it's not vegan but it's not tested on animals, paraben free, alcohol free, preservative free, mineral oil free. When it comes to each individual shade and their breakdown I'll tell you that the majority of these shades are very high performing. So as you can see I do have some color on my bottom lid. I kind of blended two shades together to make it a little bit more purpley. Bora which is over here and then I added bubble over top of it. It does make the eye look a little bit more interesting as well and adds a little bit of a different color that's still complementary. So I do really like that as well, but I do think as a rule of thumb, a lot of these shades are really, really strong. I'll tell you that Illusion, although it's the most powerful duochrome in here, it requires maybe like three layers compared to two. I don't know, I just think when it's translated on the lid, it's just a little bit disappointing compared to what I was hoping for. Otherwise, Tool is really, really strong. I'm looking at the rest of them. So Brisk and Airy and Bellini, these three mattes here do require a little bit of building as well. I would say the one that needs the most building is Bellini, which is this kind of orangey color. It's really beautiful, but it does seem to be quite weak when you're putting the first layer on and then you have to keep building it to get that really nice neon orange. Best practice for this for sure is to have a concealer base. When it comes to this, I was actually just using no primer at all to see how it would just do on my skin and it did really well. So there's nothing wrong with that or even a primer that's sheer but if you have a concealer it actually gives you that nice kind of opaque even canvas and then those pastels will shine through a little bit more. When it comes to Circo Loco and Pastel, the Cotton Candy Pink is more on the peachier side compared to the shade Feather. Adriatic is from Pastel and that's obviously much more of a green compared to Flip, which is quite deep. When I compare them formulation wise, I think that these are actually a little bit richer overall compared to pastel. Pastel is definitely lighter in opacity. So I was basically hoping for the strength intensity in this palette to be translated in pastel because these are colors, like if I wear color, I'm gonna be wearing this one over Circo Loco. They're just quite deep overall compared to this one. This palette does have a lot of pros. It does have some cons as well, given that they're not as vibrant as Natasha typically can produce in my opinion, but I do still think I'm gonna have a lot of fun with this one. I just think it's not her best palette that she's ever done. So I do think the quality is consistent among the shades. I do think it's definitely not a terrible palette. So it's a good palette, but not her best. I don't certainly regret picking it up or anything, but I don't necessarily think that it's a need. Really hope you guys enjoyed this review. I really had a fun time testing this one out. Biggest thank you to my friend Panna who sourced this palette for me. She is in the UK and she saw it. So thank you so much for your help. I love you, you know I do. She's also a beauty reviewer on Instagram. So go check out her Instagram. I will link her down below as well. And until my next one guys, take care and stay safe. Bye guys.